In this video, we'll be talking about the CBM2 series of computers from Commodore and how you can run MS-DOS on these machines. Expect the same as always, no fluff, no filler, tiny little wee bit of history. Today, a little bit less than usual. If you want more, let me know in the comments, I can do a different video. Mostly, we're going to be talking about how to run MS-DOS on it. So, sit back, relax, let's have some fun! The CBM2 series was intended to be Commodore's follow-up to their original pet line of computers, the new generation from Commodore, as this brochure proudly announces. So what were the CBM2 machines? Well, they were a little bit of everything Commodore was working on at the time. Most of them were obvious descendants of the PET with 80 by 25 text displays. Some of them had the brand new VIC-2 chip in them. They all had a SID chip for sound, which might seem a strange feature for a line of business computers, but if you have a chip fab and they're making SID chips, why not? They also all had an MOS 6509 CPU. The 6509 was a derivative of the 6502 with banking logic that allowed the CPU to address one megabyte of memory. That sounds amazing for early 80s 8-bit technology, but if you ever program for the 6509 architecture and try to actually take advantage of this, you might be less enthusiastic about it. Some of the CBM2 machines came in high-profile cases with built-in CRT displays. Some were in low-profile cases with video outputs intended to be used with an external display. Some of them made it into production, some of them almost made it into production and then were recalled by Commodore. Some that made it into production were liquidated by Commodore through a company called Protecto Enterprises. The model numbers on the CBM2 line were all over the map and they varied between the US and European models even for the same machines. If this all sounds a bit confusing, that's because it is. Even people who worked for Commodore at the time weren't exactly sure what was going on with the CBM2 line. With that general overview out of the way, let's get to the good parts. One of the features of the CBM2 line that Commodore was marketing was the ability to add an 8088 board so you could run MS-DOS or CPM. Indeed, Commodore did create an 8088 board for the CBM2 line of computers. I don't know the name of the original engineer of this board, but the initial implementation didn't work. Commodore engineer Benny Pruden, who started at the company in Dallas, Texas, working for Commodore's cash register division, was assigned to the project to figure out why it wasn't working. Benny successfully diagnosed the issues with the board, and then Frank Hughes implemented the fixes. Now we know a little bit more about the CBM2 line of machines. We also know that Commodore made an 8088 card for these machines. How cool, right? So what if we actually wanted to use one? Well, the reality is tough luck. You're probably not gonna find one. They made very few of them and there's probably even fewer surviving today, but all is not lost. Stick around. Fortunately, there's a really smart fellow named Michel Playbon who is super interested in the CBM2 machines. Michel got his hands on an 8088 board and started to experiment with it, eventually creating his own replica of the board and working to improve DOS compatibility. You should really go check out his website if you have even the slightest interest in this topic. Michel made his replica boards available for sale and I purchased one which arrived yesterday. I'm gonna show you what it takes to install the board and show you how it boots. The first thing we need to do is remove the board from the case. So I'll yank the keyboard off first, then open the case up, remove the screws and pull the board out. With the main board removed from the CBM2 case, I can now install the four standoffs that Michal included with the kit I purchased. With the standoffs installed, now I can put the board back into the case. Uh-oh, 
first spot of trouble here. When I purchased this CBM 25680, it was in non-working condition. One of the failed components was the 6509 CPU, and it's nearly impossible to find a spare 6509 laying around. Fortunately for those of us trying to keep these old machines alive, Jim Brain sells a new 6509 board at his Go4 Retro web shop. A 6502 plugged into the new 6509 board provides a drop-in compatible 6509 replacement. This presents a minor problem though because the standoffs I installed don't provide enough height to clear the new 6509. I'll just add some additional standoffs for height, no problem. Boards mounted, now I just connect the cables. Last thing, insert the battery and then the SD card. The SD card comes pre-formatted with FreeDOS already installed. It really is just a plug and play solution. This all looks good. The board is detected and is booting. It sees the onboard 894K of RAM. I'm gonna press F19, which is Shift F9 to start. Funny to see Intel inside there. Now I'll press F10 to look at the config. I didn't install the custom character ROM because a couple pins broke off during shipping. I'll fix that later. For now, this looks good. That's all to see here, I guess, so F1 to boot. to show you for today. I realize that's not a whole lot of exploration of DOS running on this machine, but I just got it. I don't have anything installed on the SD card yet. I'll get around to that though. And if there's anything in particular you want to see me do on this machine, drop a note in the comments and we'll have a look. Until then, I'll see you next time.